Unless we have more news from fashion, 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 fashion. This is courtesy of The Daily, The Daily Front Row. The Daily, The Daily Front Row reports, quite shockingly, that Emanuela Alt is out of Vogue Paris. <gasps> Who would have guessed it? Obviously, most of us would have guessed it with all the restructuring that they're doing over there at Condé Nast. I think loads of other, you know, uh, location Pacific Vogue's got, you know, absorbed into other regions or got completely scrapped overall. Editors leaving left, right and centre and not posting any farewell messages and stories of discontent behind the scenes. Just absolute calamity. And if you're really smart or if you're really attentive, you would notice that a lot of this maybe was as a consequence of all the stuff that happened with Bon Appetit. When Bon Appetit happened and Condé Nast basically stood firm and said, nah, we're not caving, we're not giving minorities and everyone else that works in this company more money to appear or the same money as some of the, their white colleagues. We don't care. This is how we do our business. And everyone decided to you know, either leave or stay when they kind of you know put their uh, foot down and said, this is how we're going to do our thing. I think that signaled a change that they decided, you know what, we're just going to revamp the entire thing. We're just going to, you know, start all over again. And unfortunately, some of the more storied labels and some of the more storied magazines, so specifically, were the ones that are on the chopping block. So, but this is quite mad to see. And also maybe um, an example of the complete shift overall from like street style icons who happen to be editors and people working in magazines and then bloggers and influencers who aren't necessarily involved in the behind the scenes of fashion but were mostly just really enthusiastic fans this is definitely the final conclusion if you ever needed that bloggers definitely jumped over the fashion editors and directors and stuff this is definitely an illustration of it even stylists you remember when people used to be obsessed with stylists i forgot who it was but there was this lady who used to wear she had like a blonde pixie bob. She used to wear all black and she used to always get photograph uh, photographed by, um, what's his name? The sartorialist. She's also a stylist. Like loads of kind of really famous celebrity stylists. Even a stylist for um, Off-White. Christina Sentara or whatever her name. Is that her name? Right? People don't really care about these people anymore, right? They've kind of gone off the boil. Let me see if I can get her name here. Christina Chris, uh, is it off white? Is it off white style? No, because it's not, isn't it? Is it off white stylist? Because I'm sure, because Louis Vuitton is not Ib Kamara. What, what's her name? Christi, Christian Sinton, Tira Sintra. What is her bloody name, man? Oh, what is her name? It's something. Christina S Stylist. What is her name? What is her name? She's like Australian. But you, you know the drift. You, you know what I mean, right? I'm sure some of you definitely know who I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, people like this, no one really cares about them. Like, unless you're a blogger, no one cares about the editors that actually work behind the scenes anymore. Uh, creative director Nushun Shan. I'm not sure that's a good person to see. But I can't find what's her name again. Is that Christine? What's her name? Christina. She, Christina. She. The Nana Stylist, what's her name? What is her name, man? Centara. And she's got a brand as well, right? She does that brand. She has a brand where it's like wardrobe staples, right? Centara. Oh, I forgot her name, man. I really did forget her name. Is that her name? Christina Centira? She's Australian. No, it's not her. Oh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter. Let's move on. Basically, bloggers have taken over the stylists. People who are more more interested in what Brian Boy wears as opposed to what Amalia Alt wears, which is absolutely wild to me to think about how it started and how it's basically going. So it says the following. According to reports, it might be the end of the era at, for Emmanuel Alt. WWE writes that the Vogue Paris editor and chief is set to leave the fashion bible as Condé Nast restructures and reconfigures Mars Heads at its European titles. While Condé Nast has yet to confirm the rumour, word is that Alt is set to leave the publication as are Olivier... Olivier Lalanne um, at the GQ front and Joseph Goshen, is it or Joseph Hossen, how you pronounce that? Editorial director and Vanity Fair, uh, Vanity Fair France. Dylan Jones, editor in chief of British GQ, just exited his role recently too over the last six months. That's a big one too. Actually, British GQ is leaving, and um, Dylan Jones, he's been a staple there for a long, long time. Over the last six months, multiple top editors at International Vogue editors have left, including India's Priya Tana, Germany's Christina Arp, um, Spain's Eugene de la Torrente, um, Japan. 
and Mitsoko Watanabe and longtime Vogue China editorial in chief Angelica Chuang exited in November. And as we were replaced by a 27 year old Margaret Zhang earlier this year. So for sure they got her for a cut price for a cut price um, salary, 100% sure. Um, I imagine if you're a distant woman, Angela, Angel, Angelica Chang, you're not going to be happy being replaced by a 27-year-old, are you? No matter if she's, I don't know who this Margaret Zhang woman is, but you know, no matter if she's flipping, you know, um, super knowledgeable and wise beyond her years, you're going to definitely take that as a personal affront. And obviously this is the latest issue of Vogue Paris featuring the one and only Halle Bieber at the front. It says the following, Mama 2, Alt 53, has a long story to hit fashion uh, history, media. She began her trajectory with the Royal French L in 1984 when she was just 17 years old. A notable stylist gained international acclaim as an unassuming street style star herself during a time of Vogue Paris uh, during um, director, uh, assuming director 22 and 2000. Well, mate, mate, I'm not reading this raw at all, am I? The notable stylist gained international acclaim as an unassuming street style star herself during her time as Vogue Paris fashion director in the late 2000s. And if the whispers about exit are true, it's unknown where she's headed next. Crazy, isn't it? And maybe this is a consequence, again, of her and Kareen Reutfeld falling out because that was, for me, the end of Vogue Paris. Vogue Paris was super good. I used to buy it all the time. It's probably the only Vogue I religiously did buy, even though most of the editorials you couldn't really understand, unfortunately but it was so good some of the stylings and the editorials were supreme superb especially when Emmanuel Alt and Karen Roetford were working hand in hand but something happened they fell out I'm not too sure if it's because Emmanuel Alt went for Karen Roetford's job or something else happened behind the scenes but something happened behind the scenes we haven't really heard anything of the reasons why it happened I'm sure people behind the scenes know and if you do know and you're a fashion head please let me know in the comments I, I'd love to know what the deal is but Emmanuel Alt was a vibe like she was a vibe. This is a couple of pictures of her from the Sartorialist, but she really did, um, you know, represent an era in history when it comes to street style. Like, it, it, and it, I don't think it can ever be replicated. It really, really cannot. Let's see some of her greatest hits here on Google. Like, it really was an era in time that she was around. She was doing some epic stuff out there. The kitten heels, the tight trousers, the double breasted jackets, the leather jackets. You remember when someone did a, someone put together a zine? This is how people were obsessed with street stylists. Now, don't think you'd ever get that. I don't think you'd ever get that kind of level of fandom with a blogger. I don't know why, but I just don't think you would do. Someone made a zine of some of Emmanuel O's best moments, quotes from her interview. I think it was in French. I can't find it anywhere, but it was a really limited edition zine. It was hard to get. I didn't buy it at the time, annoyingly. I'm sure it's probably going to be worth a lot of money going forward, but it was a little zine, a little kind of A5 white bit of paper uh, maybe it was, it was printed on a good paper i don't know but it wasn't that well done but somebody really a fanatical fan of her that did that and even myself me i made a mix back in the day um a disco to disco mix of some of my soundcloud i think still to this day where i basically the inspiration behind it was like you know um stuff that could be played within the vogue paris headquarters i think i might have emailed somebody at vogue paris about having it played of course i didn't get any no actually i, I think i emailed it somebody and then i think somebody on fashion spot forum the place that they're super critical about Vogue Paris and what it's kind of become nowadays, but they used to love Emmanuel Alt back in the day too. Some of the threads are maybe still on there on the Fashion Spot forum of every look that she wore, but I think some of the Fashion Spot forum said that they might have sent it to somebody at Vogue Paris. I don't know if someone saw my mix or not, but I definitely recorded a mix back in the day, a disco to disco mix with like Blood Orange and some other people playing that was super good. Maybe one of my better mixes from back, maybe it was like 10 years ago I did this mix, ages ago, and I'm hoping that it crossed their desk, but man, it was an era in time Emanuela Alt man she did some great things in terms of street style like people were obsessed with this woman and then looking back on it it's just obviously effortless French chic but it was nothing really loud nothing crazy she was not Suzu bubbling the thing out there which you know don't get me wrong Suzy Bubble this does her thing and people are maybe you know um you know um uh, there's loads of uh, her children out there that exist but in terms of what people get crazy over nowadays in terms of street style this is the complete opposite of it right just chic classic stuff like nothing too crazy not many colors just very well done just amazing even the way she does her hair right that kind of like just woke up maybe i had a quickie in the morning maybe i had to get my kids ready for school whatever it may be like just effortlessly effortlessly cool and I don't think you're ever going to get that level of fandom with a blogger anymore. I don't know why that is. I don't know why. Don't ask me why that happens. But that level of fandom, I don't think you'll get with a blogger. Does she do Pilates or does she just smoke cigarettes and fast all day? Who knows? But she was skinny and slim as hell. She fits into all the clothes effortlessly. She was actually responsible. I don't. She might be responsible because I think that maybe is Isabel Marant's sandals. She might have been responsible for the Isabel Marant thing too. That like Isabel Marant 
um, runway stuff was legitimized because of Emmanuel at all. Nowadays, it's a bit derivative. It's a bit samey. She doesn't really take any risk. It's just boring stuff. And you really question who's actually buying that. But Emmanuel Alt was the perfect conduit for portraying and displaying those looks out there in the public. Like, classic stuff. Like, really, really well done. She doesn't really have a bad outfit. That might be the loudest thing she's ever worn. She doesn't have a bad outfit. I don't know. Sure, look at people. Look, we're obsessed with it. See? How to dress like Emmanuel Alt. They were obsessed with her back in the day. She had the era. She had a time in history that I don't think can ever be replicated again. Like, she just looks so good in clothes. Maybe it's just me. But for somebody to look that sexy and hot in trousers is definitely something that has to be commended right maybe it's just me but there's not much skin showing she's not showing like it's not classically what you'd imagine sexy to look like especially nowadays with people twerking all over the place but there's no cleavage there's no bums there's a bit of ankle maybe some a cheeky elbow and a wrist here and there but hardly any skin and just really effortlessly cool effortlessly chic effortlessly sexy and just look at that and i forgot um Oh yeah, that's Geraldine Saglio. That's the other. That's a kind of right hand woman who took up her reins, and that's the kind of girl that was a little bit more adventurous of her clothes. Look at those trousers. Look how well done those pants are. How they look with the kitten heels and the shirt tucked in with the sleeves rolled up. Like just oh, so cool, man. Her and Geraldine Saglio. Are like look at that look. Look, that's Geraldine Saglio there. That's not Emmanuel. Oh, actually, just super, super, super good. Like she had a she had an era. She had an era. So for sure. Uh, it'd be for sure behind the scenes like it wouldn't surprise me people told me she was an absolute nightmare but i love her just looking at her in terms of images online like some of her looks even back in the day you look at that stuff and you say a guy could easily take a look like this and reinterpret it and make it work for him easily right you replace the sound those, those kind of gladiator sandals with a pair of slip-ons you maybe you know have the pants a little bit looser but the way that look just looks overall right that sort of like you know rope you know, maybe as a black dude, I can't wear a rope like that because, you know, of the slave connotations. But overall, right, just look at that effortlessly. The jewelry there, the watch, the necklace, just well, well, well done, isn't it, right? And a, and a somewhat weathered but also refreshed face, right? It's a very French thing, right? They look somewhat tired and also rejuvenated. How do they do it? Nobody knows. But yeah, Emmanuel, oh, is out of Vogue Paris, isn't it? She's out, that's the, her there with her daughter. Look at them. Look how cool they look, her and Jodie Segment. I guess that's, is that an American girl that's just kind of, you know, along for the ride or is that her daughter? I'm not too sure, but she doesn't look that great outfit there. You know, the, oh, that might be actually a daughter. They look quite similar there, isn't it? That might be a daughter, I think. And she might be a teenager as well. So I take back the insult. I don't like insulting kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, great stuff, innit? Um, yeah, Melo Oates out of Vogue, man. She's out of Vogue. Um, that was an era in time. I still have a couple of her Vogue Paris that she was obviously at the helm of. I wonder what's going to happen going forward. I wonder what's happening going forward. But look at that. Look how effortlessly cool that is. Come on, man. She single-handedly might have brought back the kitten hill. Who else wore Ken Hills as much as Emanuela Alta made him look incredible? She was perusing around the Paris streets, going to fashion shows to fashion shows, Milan streets, cobbled roads, and wearing stilettos. Absolutely wild woman. Wild woman, man. Like, wild. Her, Anna Winter, um, who's the other lady? The Italian lady that always wears complete runway looks from head to toe. I forgot her name. Anna De La Russo, remember her? Like that was an era in street style, man. Like I said, do as 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 well as as good as some of these other street bloggers and stuff, stylists, stylists are like that. Who's that Italian girl that everyone's obsessed with? That she's on Depop, and oh, I used to hate her so much, man. People used to like jump. What's her name? She's blonde, but like super. Like those people aren't really. I don't know what it is why they don't they don't necessarily have the same level of fandom that these street style people have because i'd imagine in terms of wealth they're all the same level right every people most of these people are rich but there is there is a small contingent of people that aren't but for the most part you look at the brian boys and the susie bubbles and these kind of people they come from you know wealthy back or not brian boy maybe not so much but you know they're, they're they're at least affluent now so it's not necessarily that much of an achievement to be dressed in these amazing garments but i don't know still there was something about her being rich having all the access to all these brands, but also being able to put it together, just made it, made it very, very special. So yeah, big up Emmanuel Oh, That might be your only bad outfit, that one. That might be your only bad outfit. Maybe it's the angle. But yeah, she doesn't really have many bad outfits, man. Just effortlessly cool with the white jeans as well, you know, classic Parisian style there, Parisian posh style, white jeans, black boots, that just effortlessly done. Look at that effortlessly done but yeah um long live Emanuela Alt you will be always remembered for just look laying it down 
like that, that that's that famous Saint Laurent bag, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the famous Saint Laurent bag. I forgot what the name is, but god damn it, I know, I know a lot about fashion. I know, I have hobbies, I have interest. What can you do? But yeah, big up Emmanuela Alt. Um, hopefully, next journey is cool. Hopefully, we get some answers as to why her and Kareen Roitford actually fell out. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully, she starts a magazine. Maybe not. She should start a magazine and leave Alexia as is. I oh, know, start a magazine. You know, also, it's funny. She also had some of the best moments with Terry Richardson, who doesn't is obviously isn't around for obvious reasons, but some of her editorials with Terry Richardson. Magnifico. But yeah, big up Emmanuel at all. Hopefully she bounces back from this and we see her again in the magazine world because we definitely, she's needed, or she takes up, Ray. imagine she goes in collaboration with flipping Phoebe Philo and they come back together and she's a stylist and Phoebe Philo's a designer. Oh, dream team, dream team, dream team, or somebody else. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows?